Hey everyone, welcome to Joyful Habits. This is Bethany. Thank you so much for stopping by today. Today we are heading into the land of milk and honey. We are going to be making candles, milk and honey candles. But I'm not talking candles that smell like honey or smell like milk, whatever that smells like. I am talking candles that literally look like milk and honey. These candles are just lovely. They're fun and they're pretty realistic looking too, especially the honey ones. And they definitely give me those early autumn vibes. And since autumn is the harvest season, I just kind of feel like milk and honey are somehow fitting, you know? So let's jump right in. First up, let's look at the materials you'll need. Glass containers for your candles. I found most of these at a store called Hobby Lobby, but you can definitely find glass containers at any craft store, grocery store, even a thrift store. You can also just use some jelly jars from your kitchen, which you'll see I end up actually doing later. I just went for containers I thought would fit the theme and look cute or fun. Uh, for the milk candles though, I do recommend finding milk bottles or something that very much would be milk because otherwise the candles won't really look like milk they'll just look like regular white candles you'll also need candle wicks clothes pins color squares specific to candle making gel wax and just a tip if you do purchase your supplies from hobby lobby they have a 50 percent off sale every other week so if you're going to get your supplies there time your purchase to when the sale is going on for those materials and save yourself some money. And lastly, you'll need soy wax and some type of container to melt your wax in. I highly recommend finding a container that you literally don't care about and can designate just to your crafting. And you'll see in this container that I already have some wax and color in there. That's because I made these honey candles last year. You'll also need a stove to melt your wax. You can just use the regular old stove in your kitchen. The only reason I'm using a tabletop stove is for your benefit just to make the video a little bit more fun to watch and aesthetically pleasing because believe me my kitchen stove is not aesthetically pleasing in the slightest if you do end up using a tabletop stove though just make sure that you have something underneath it that can resist the heat and that way you don't damage your tablecloth or start something on fire and yeah those are the basic supplies you'll need for making the candles <music> Okay, let's get into the fun part, making our candles. So we're gonna start off with the honey candles. These are honestly so easy and yet they come out so beautiful. We're gonna start by melting down our gel wax and again, just pull out your stove or go to your stove. Fill your container with the gel wax. I don't have a measurement for you here. I honestly just eyeballed it, but you know, take an educated guess, put in as much as you think you'll need and start to melt it down. Now, what I have found in my personal experience is let the gel wax melt down at least most of the way before you add the color. And that way the color just incorporates a lot more evenly. <music> I added two color squares. I just wanted that really nice deep honey color. Again, I don't have measurements for you. I'm sorry if that bothers you, but I was just kind of eyeballing it based on what I thought would work and what I liked. Then you're just going to place your candle wick. We're using the clothespin to hold the candle wick in place while we pour the wax. You'll notice that I moved the clothespin to the side just while I was pouring the wax, and that is simply because I don't trust myself and I didn't want to make a mess. But yeah, you can put it to the side. You can even technically put the wick in afterwards, but I just think it's easier if you put it in first. And yeah, we're just going to start filling up our little honey containers gotta say this is probably one of my favorite little jars that I found. I love the rounded shape, it's just so cute. I feel like if you were making these for a party and you know making them party favors or something I think these are the jars I would go with because they're the perfect size, they look adorable, you can make a bajillion of them. Candle wicks are not perfectly straight, but I'm okay with it. The candle will still burn. Everything still looks nice. And yeah, this is what we have so far. Here are our little honey jars. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, now this one I was really excited for. One, it is huge. Two, it literally looks like a beehive and it has a lid and it has a little honey stick. I thought this would be so fun to turn into a candle. This one did take quite a bit of gel wax, but it was so worth it. I'm so glad I tried this. Just love that beautiful golden color. here that the clothespin is not long enough to go across the entire glass beehive. I ended up just kind of propping it against the honey stick and it actually worked really well. So at this point I had filled all the jars I had originally planned on making into candles and I still had a lot of gel wax left over. My educated guess was not that educated apparently. But it worked out really well because I went to the kitchen, I grabbed a few jelly jars or canning jars that I had just laying around, filled them up, and I'm really glad that I did actually because they came out really well. And in case you're curious, this is what the gel wax looks like when it dries. So real quick, I just want to show you these little guys. These are the ones that I made last year. You'll notice this one has a lid that latches. I took a little bit of twine and tied a bow around it. And then what I did is I took a piece of cardboard and I cut it into the shape of a puddle. I don't really know what shape that would be, but just kind of looking like a puddle. Put a little wooden spoon on top and then I coated the whole thing in the gel wax and let it dry. Put it up against the honey jar and that way it looks like a little spoon covered in honey and a little bit of honey spilling over. I thought that was really really fun. Now this one, you'll notice there's no candle wick. I didn't actually make this one a candle at all. Put a wooden spoon in it and filled it up with the gel wax to look like a little jar of honey. And that I just used as a prop or to decorate or put in my YouTube videos. Yeah, I really love it. And this little guy is the same thing. I did not make him a candle either. I put the little wooden spoon in and I even let some of the gel wax spill onto the edges of it and down the side of the jar. Just to look like honey was kind of spilling out over. And then again, I took a little piece of cardboard from like a cereal box and turned it upside down, covered it in the gel wax, but I put the cork like the that went to the jar on top of the cardboard, covered that in the gel wax to look like honey, and then I put a little flower and put the jar on top. And then, I don't know if anyone knows Disney Pooh Bear. I'm pretty sure most of us have at least heard of him. Yeah, I just thought it'd be fun to write like a little note that said Pooh's honey and then make it look like honey was stuck all over it and dripping down the note. I don't know. Again, there are so many things you can do with this and the more I think about it, the more ideas I come up with. Okay, so our honey candle should be dry by now, so you're just going to remove the clothespins and as you can see, some of these candle wicks are very long. We're going to trim them back and this is what we have so far. They're already looking great and I love the colors, warm, like golden tone, again, late summer, autumn. If you're someone who enjoys decorating for the season, I think you could definitely incorporate these into your summer decorating, into your early autumn decorating, into your late autumn decorating. You could incorporate these into a Thanksgiving tablescape, host a fun harvest party and have these out as party favors or just part of the decor, host a summer beehive bee honey theme and again have them as party favors or part of the decorations. You can make them candles, you cannot make them candles. Candles. The possibilities are endless and the more I think about it the more I think of. I think these would also make really nice gifts birthday gift, Christmas gift, what have you, and later on you're going to see that I come up with some ways to embellish them a little more or to wrap them. Okay, so we've made our candles, but now let's light the candles and see how they look. These are honestly some of the most beautiful candles I've ever seen. I don't know what it is. I don't know if it's the warm tones or the fact that they really look like honey, and I love honey. I don't know what it is, but I love them. You will notice that I didn't add fragrance or scent to the candles. If you want them to smell like something, all you have to do is 
when you pick up your materials, look in the candle aisle. They should have either essential oils or fragrances that you can add a few drops to. And you would just add that about the same time you would put the color in when you're melting the wax. I usually prefer to keep it fragrance free. I just pretty much do that with everything. I do occasionally use essential oils or something along those lines, but I kind of try to keep it either just no smell or go a more natural route. If you saw my last Christmas video, you'll see that I did like a potpourri on the stove, simmered some spices. Again, I just kind of try to go for the more natural route when it comes to smell. But yeah, that's just a personal preference of mine. Like I said, if you want to add fragrance to these candles, you most certainly can. I think these candles would be so beautiful pretty much anywhere but I think they would definitely be fun to decorate your kitchen with because they look like food you know like, like milk and honey so I think it would fit the theme of a kitchen especially in you know autumn I'm picturing you know the honey candles and the milk candles bushel of fresh apples on the counter pumpkins and other veggies from your garden a few fall leaves acorns freshly baked loaf of bread on the counter I don't know that's just what I'm picturing I just think they would really fit in well with the food theme so kitchen a big dinner <laughs> So these candles are already beautiful just as they are, but if you want to go the extra mile, which I did, I wanted to embellish them, wrap a few of them as gifts, and yeah, these are different ideas that I came up with to do that. So first up, I wanted to start with one of these little honey jars. What I did is I just put him inside this little cotton bag and I took some embroidery thread that was a really beautiful warm caramel color and I just tied a little bow around the top and that alone was really cute but then I cut out a little piece of that cereal box cardboard <laughs> and I colored it brown and I wrote honey with a gold marker on it then I topped it off with a little sunflower really love how this turned out and funny enough I actually bought those little sunflowers almost two years ago for something completely different and when I was getting things together for these I found them and I thought oh maybe those would work and they do they work perfectly so yeah that was nice okay now for this little guy I had some brown parchment paper turned the jar upside down cinched it all up like a little bag took some more of that embroidery thread tied a bow around it and I love how you can still see some of the honey or the you know the honey candle through the parchment paper then I just took a little yellow flower and I added that to the top and I could have left it there but I added another one of those little honey tags to it and again I love how you can see the candle through the parchment paper Okay, now this guy, I didn't really like the lid, it was kind of plain. So what I did is I took fabric, which again was a very warm color, I put it on top and I tied a little embroidery thread around it again. And this one I kept pretty simple, I just kind of left it there. Also if you're wondering why I put the piece of tape that was to hold the fabric in place while I tied the embroidery thread around it, the fabric kept moving around on me. So that is not needed, that was just my little making my life easier, or at least trying to. Now I really liked how the fabric turned out for that smaller jar, so I wanted to do the same thing for the large canning jars. But this time I wanted to go a little bit of a step further and I decided I would embroider something on the fabric. So I grabbed my embroidery thread and my embroidery hoop and went to town. I decided to spell out joyful. You know, looking back on this, I think I'm going to go back and add a little bit more or maybe do another one. I kept it pretty simple, but I think the possibilities are endless here. You could put a border around it, border something themed like a maple leaf or acorns, a honey jar, you know, whatever. And I'm just using a white pencil here to very lightly mark the size of the jar just so I keep my embroidery within that and it's not hanging over the edge of the jar and also to just very lightly trace out what I want to embroider
So I really love how it turned out, but the fabric was just a little bit too big for the jar, so I just kind of trimmed the edges until I liked it. Took some more embroidery thread and tied it around the edges, and I love how it turned out. I'm realizing now I probably could have given the fabric a little bit of an ironing to get those creases out, but I think it looks fine. Okay, so again, going with the fabric because I'm just loving how that's turning out. I took the other little honey jar, covered it in that cheesecloth, and again, some brown embroidery thread and a little flower on top. Now this guy I kept very simple. I just tied a little bow with the embroidery thread and then I grabbed a little brown button and just put it in the middle of the bow. Now for the other large canning jar, I wanted to do the same thing that I did for the first one, but I just did a reverse color scheme. So I had the brown fabric for the first one with green embroidery thread, and now I'm doing green fabric with brown embroidery thread. And instead of joyful, I just embroidered the word joy, which is one of my favorite words. Again, I had too much fabric for the jar, so I just had to trim it again. And again, I definitely could have ironed the fabric, and I may go back and do that, but for now, it's fine. Again, I think these would make great party favors, great gifts, decorations. I know a lot of people really enjoy decorating tiered trays and I know for those that you need a lot of miniature items. So I think these would be perfect for that because you can make little mini honey jars and then have a summer themed tiered tray with you know beehives and honey jars, flowers, or you could go the autumn route and have a tiered tray for fall again with the honey in there leaves and some of those warm colors. I know I've already said it multiple times, but again, the possibilities are just endless. Okay, we've made the honey candles, but now let's make our milk candles. You'll see here that I'm using a double boiler method. All that means is that instead of putting the thing that I'm melting directly on the flame, I'm putting that thing in water and then heating up the water. And again, I would recommend using something that you can designate to crafting. I got this glass measuring cup at the dollar store, so it was inexpensive. I don't have to worry about scrubbing it afterwards and disinfecting it so I can use it for food later. And also that way you're not ruining or you don't risk ruining any of your nicer and more expensive kitchen dishes. Once again, I did not eyeball it correctly. I did not melt enough wax, so I had to quickly melt some more. First I melted too much wax for the honey and now not enough for the milk, but it's okay. I figured it out, problem resolved, and we move on. So it was at this point that I remembered I'm making candles and yeah, I forgot to put the candle wick in, so I quickly Put it in afterwards, luckily the wax was still liquid so I could do that, got that in time luckily. We're just going to be patient and wait for it to dry. And we're going to trim the wicks back and this is what we got. And then I just kind of played around with pairing it with different honey jars that I had made and seeing which ones I liked better. And I just love how these guys turned out. The thing that really makes these candles special isn't anything other than the container we're putting it in because we're just using regular soy wax. So, you know, if you were to just put that in a regular container, it would just look like a white candle. But yeah, that's that's what we got and I just I love so much how these turned out and I think they pair so well with the honey candles. I think they would look great anywhere, but especially in the kitchen, table with food or Thanksgiving dinner. Well, that's all I have for you today. I really hope that you get a chance to give these a try. If you do give these a try, tag me over on Instagram. I would love to see all your beautiful creations. 
and I hope that you've been inspired, you've learned something new, or that you at least have a smile on your face. If you have any ideas or questions, suggestions, or you just want to chat, feel free to talk with me down in the comments. I would love to hear from you. And this has been Joyful Habits, where we daydream and add a touch of whimsy to the ordinary. I'll see you all in my next video, and until then, keep smiling!